what are some like actionable takeaways that they can you know start applying to make this machine a little bit more smooth so to actually naturally optimize their testosterone levels maybe some of these you mentioned before some of these levers that they can be pulling the the things that are actually going to be making a, a the, the the big things that are going to make an impact rather than focusing on like these little minutia like okay how many what's the what's the duration of my cold shower is it an optimal duration for example yeah so uh, it's a great question and uh, I, i'm going to give you a, a counterintuitive answer which is different to what most people would give and the tendency with this sort of stuff when it comes to optimizing your health is to get into this checkbox mode where it's like okay am i taking vitamin d am i taking zinc am i doing all this i'm taking all this stuff but nothing's working and i would say the number one thing that guys should do in order to start feeling better is stop giving yourself a hard time that's the that's the number one thing it's like we don't talk about this as men enough but as men we have the we've spoken about this but we have like the burden of performance so we have to perform and no one gives a shit about us if we don't perform right so it's up to you to perform but if you're constantly giving yourself a hard time and constantly beating yourself up about why you don't feel the way that you want to feel etc you're not going to feel any better you're not going to be motivated and driven to want to change that situation right so the number one thing that i find that i counsel on is that actually stop being so hard on themselves because here's the thing if you don't devote so much energy to being hard on yourself all the time and giving yourself and like beating yourself up over minor transgressions and mistakes then you have more energy to devote to feeling better and putting that energy into things that you want to do and to making your because at the end of the day what is it that you're doing all this stuff for to optimize your health if not to feel better and so if you can't give yourself permission to feel good about yourself now even though you might not have the ideal physique you might not be performing in the bedroom the way that you want if you don't allow yourself to feel good about yourself and give yourself permission to feel okay and not beat yourself up for mistakes then how are you ever going to feel good because trust me if you still have that mindset after taking testosterone if you stay taking all the things that we're going to talk about today and you still beat yourself up you're not going to feel any better so it doesn't matter so i i would say that's the number one thing because as men, we tend to be super, super hard on ourselves and give ourselves a hard time. But and we think that's going to motivate us, but it doesn't motivate you because you're putting all that energy into being hard on yourself when you could devote it positively. So I would say that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is like the most actionable thing, I think, is like work on one thing at a time. Because guys have a tendency to like focus on many, tr many things and try and optimize all different areas, sleep, hormones, stress, all those kind of things. And I think that I was, I'm a big fan of focusing on one thing at a time. That the thing that's going to move the needle the most and then once you've done that, focus on the next thing. So for most guys, the thing that's going to move the needle the most, in my experience, is sleep. Because the quality of your sleep determines the quality of your waking life, right? And it's such an easy one to fix. It's such an easy one to rectify. And it will like it's kind of a domino effect on the rest of your life. Because if you sleep, let's say, seven to eight hours a night of solid sleep, like you feel great the next day. Like you feel like an, a new person. But if you sleep like four or five hours of broken shit sleep every night, like you're going to feel like terrible every day. And it doesn't matter how much zinc or vitamin D or testosterone booster you take, you're still going to feel like crap. And so with that newfound energy that you get from improving your quality of sleep, therefore you can devote it to like being a bit more disciplined with your diet. And I'll say from a scientific standpoint, for example, there's lots of research to demonstrate the link between things like obesity, low testosterone and all these things with lack of sleep, right? So sleep deprivation ruins and tanks your testosterone. And also interestingly, what sleep deprivation does is that it um, increases your cravings for high caloric sugar dense foods. So if you ever wonder when you wake up after a bad night's sleep why you're craving all these foods, it's not because you lack discipline. It's not because it's your problem. It's because your body's craving it because you haven't slept enough and because your blood sugar has probably dropped, right? So if you devote that energy to sleep, you'll find that weight loss is easier you find you have more energy and you have more discipline and willpower to devote to everything else. So I would say sleep is the number one thing when it comes to optimizing your testosterone and health because it's just a domino effect and everything else and a very actionable step. We could talk about sleep all day long. We could do a podcast on it, but I would say the number one thing is to stop looking at your phone before you go to bed because the guys use it as a bit of a crutch to help them fall asleep and distract their mind. But what mm -hmm. it does is it's just messing with your quality of sleep. And without fail, everyone that I've counseled to stop looking at their phone before they go to bed, their, their sleep quality improves. And then the other thing I would say is like, again, it's a very basic thing, but how many guys watching this, how many of you are actually drinking enough water every day? 70% of your body is made up of water and you want to like look at all these testosterone boosters, but you're still drinking like uh, one cup of water a day, right? So <laughs> if, you have, if you have mastered the basics, guys, don't, don't try to like the old adage is don't try and run before you can walk, right? So I always believe in getting those foundational things right. And then you can move on to the more, you know, the, the sexy things. I mean, that, uh, that's interesting you mentioned the water because, uh, I just did an eight week boot camp in Marbella with our, with our mutual friend. And like for, for, I did my first amateur boxing match. And one of the things that they told us from the very, very start of that eight week camp was drink like five, you know, like a gallon of water a day, every day. 
for like eight weeks. And I cannot emphasize enough how much that alone impacted my energy levels, impacted my quality of sleep. It was ridiculous. Like considering, I don't think I've ever drank that much water every day consistently for that length of time before. And it was that, that one thing I lost like three and a half kilos, like effortlessly, like my quality of sleep, even it was weird, even though like some nights, okay, we'd, we'd be out having a late dinner. And then I have to, at 6am, I have to get up and do a strength and conditioning uh, session with our mutual friend T. I felt amazing. Like that, we didn't feel like bad sleep, you know? And it was like that, that I can absolutely testify to that, uh, to that improvement, like just drink more goddamn water go. And Another thing I'll say in regards to improving quality of sleep, I personally have experimented with this a lot and having like a blacked out room, I find like having nowhere where uh, like artificial light can kind of creep in is has massively, always massively improved my quality of sleep. I try to keep the room as black as I possibly can. Uh, from the boat like so that that room i go to sleep there's not a single crack of light coming in and so i feel like i'll even even though i'm not necessarily waking up to sunlight when i wake up the sleep has been kind of uninterrupted because i've uh, maybe i'm wrong with this but i've heard that your body uh like your even your skin cells has like light receptors where it can like if you if it gets exposed to light it can signal your body to start, you know, like that, that waking up process. And like, you can kind of make sure you don't start that too early by just having a completely black room. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I couldn't speak for skin receptors on the skin. That's something that I have to research myself, but it, it makes total sense because your, your exposure to sunlight dictates your circadian rhythm and like how your body clock functions. Right? So if you think of how our bodies evolved and how, how our ancestors lived, they would get up in the morning from sunlight and then they would be like in bed or like in the cave or whatever by the by the campfire uh, when when the sun goes down and so they wouldn't have any exposure to light and so what your circadian rhythm uh, sorry exposure to sunlight like kind of um modulates your circadian rhythm and your circadian rhythm is like your sleep wake cycle right so basically dictating what time you go to bed how how quickly you fall you feel tired before you go to sleep and all of those kind of things. And it also stimulates the release of a, a hormone called melatonin, which helps you fall asleep at night. And so if you find that you're struggling to fall asleep at night and uh, it's, a, it's a real struggle to fall asleep, uh, a lot of the times it can be because your sleep-wake cycle has been disrupted because you probably got too much exposure to um, artificial light. And sometimes what, a really good hack that you can do in the morning is just like get exposure to sunlight first thing in the morning and that can reset your circadian rhythm and make it a bit more natural as a, the way it's supposed to be. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And so, cause, cause the, like you mentioned before, like staying off your, uh, staying off your phone and stuff, right. That the light that you get from that or from say like a laptop, like this is like artificial blue light. Correct. And that's, that is what correct. Correct. stops your body from going into this uh, melatonin production cycle and, and getting into sleep a lot easier. Is it, that, that would be accurate. I, I would say that's accurate. I, I would also say the most accurate thing is we can talk about like sleep hygiene is perhaps the is the most important aspect. Like sleep hygiene, when I say sleep hygiene, it's what you do before t before you go to bed, which dictates how well you sleep. Also, a lot of people in my experience is that the mind is the most powerful thing here. The mind is way more powerful than the body. The body is an instrument of the mind. And a lot of people have a story about their sleep or about their health in general, right? And so anyone watching this, it's important for you to identify what is the story that you've been telling yourself about your health? Have you been telling yourself the story about your health, which is that I'm always feeling tired, I always feel like crap, every day is bad, my sleep's terrible, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you tell yourself a story for long enough, you're going to believe it, right? So I would encourage you to tell yourself a different story, even if you don't believe it, at first, it's important because your mind basically, it doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination, right? So if you continually feed it with a certain story, that's basically what it's going to give you, right? So not only to change these things that Sterling and I have been talking about, like these tactics, the sleep hygiene and, and blue lights, which are very, very important, by the way, it's also important to identify what are the, the mindset blocks that you might have around your sleep. A lot of guys that I speak to have problems with their sleep. They say, oh, I never sleep well. I always sleep, but I always wake up in the night. Well, if you all tell yourself you always wake up in the night, guess what's going to happen, right? So it's important to be aware of these little traps that you have, these mental traps. Hmm, I like that. 
Uh, I'm just going to quickly check if we've got any questions. Man. Uh, let's help people. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Yeah, uh, from uh, here from Mike. How do you know if you're drinking a low amount of water and or too much water? Like, what? How do you know if you're drinking enough water, basically? Well, I would I would always err on the side of you. You're not drinking enough water. Most people just don't drink enough, <laughs> right? So I wouldn't worry about that as a, as a problem. But like the old adage is that if you can see your pee is clear, right? I don't know if that's really an accurate gauge or not. Some people have an issue when they drink a lot of water. They, I'm going to the bathroom too much. Well, sorry to say, but that's part of being hydrated. So <laughs> you just go to the bathroom more often, right? That's just part of being hydrated and drinking a lot of water. But I, I, I mean, when, when I was drinking these, fight, the, doing this, doing this boot camp and drinking like five, like a gallon of, of water a day, like five liters of water a day, uh, because I was sweating so much, I actually didn't pee that much. I, I, right. I, I wasn't constantly going to the bathroom. Because I was just sweating it out because I was right. well, we we're doing sprints on the treadmill every day and like this kind of thing and we we're sparring every day. So that for the guys listening to that, it's like if you're drinking a lot of water and you're peeing all the time, well, you you might not be sweating enough. You know, you might right. not be hit, hitting the gym enough because like that's it's supposed to, you know, that's kind of how you cool down, you evaporate and that's how your body cools the temperature down. That's what the water's for, you know, 